Which of the following is a hose? I guess recessive. I can't see. I can't see uh, my my screen lag. It's still at the. Uh, okay. okay, it's, it's lagging a lot. It's lagging really. Yeah, okay, I, I couldn't me, see anything. Let me stop my screen and then I'll reshare it. Okay. Okay. You guys see the kahoot? I can see it. Yes. Okay. According to Mendel, how many alleles did one genotype have? My screen isn't loading. It's still lagging. Like, I can't see the problem even. Yeah, I, I can't see the problem. I literally had to get like, so much. I ran out of time. I didn't even yes. have time to. What were you trying to stop sharing? I didn't even sharing? see the screen. Uh, okay. Uh, good. Okay, this one's longer, so you guys should probably have more It's time. way too uh, laggy. It's too laggy, and it's like... Okay, no. It literally was halfway through when it, when it stopped loading. No. <laughs> okay, what is what was the major theory of heredity before Mendel? Lag. That's the theory. Lag. Okay. Because <laughs> that's the only theory we're gonna get with your little screen, you know. Lag. I'm gonna nurse it. <laughs> okay, I think a lot of people can see it, so I'll it's just carry on. And, and it's like you can't see it. Well, turn off your videos, can see it, please. But, like, can you turn off your videos, please? This is why we like GameKit better. Yeah, yeah. Only, uh, only one video is on and it's literally lagging to death. Wait, a brown lagging? worm. A brown worm violates the law of dominance. Well, isn't <laughs> that just absolutely? I mean, okay. I don't remember a single thing, so I could be wrong. Okay, so. Um, a white pea flower that has two recessive white alleles doesn't uh, violate because if you have two recessive and like the recessive trait is white, then it shows if it's two recessive. Whereas a cow that has both brown and white spots has co-dominance because like two traits are being exhibited at the same time. And I'm sorry about the lag. I can't see. Only have a thousand. 515. Okay, the first generation of offspring is called F1, true or false? Okay, most people, most people could see that. Well, we didn't I, really I know. need to see that. Well, we didn't you really don't need to see it. It's paused. Okay, now it is. Y'all, stop violating. I am not the imposter. Funny thing that this is the one thing I remember. Me too. Me too. Like, I remember, I just remembered, like, maybe in a Kahoot or something. I remember um, that. You said that. It's like, lagging. in the last Kahoot, and we had to guess. It's lagging. Okay, okay. So, good job on that question. As for I lag, I'll try to do, like, not a Kahoot next time so it doesn't lag. Why does it have to say? Why does it have to say rhombicosidodecahedron? Rhombicosidodecahedron. Because that could be the answer. Okay. Imagine. Hooray! Mm. Among Us birthday Ooh. party. What I'm a runner up. Hooray! I can't I believe I was in lag for me and I still got it. I oh, actually sure. got fourth place. Let's go. Whoa. Okay. If Dogs that many fail. A's fits in a I'm name, like, I'm thinking of choosing. Like, I'm, I'm thinking of using the name anti disestablishmentarianism. And now we do. Oh my do goodness! Who is spamming Among Us in the chat? Okay. Anyways, uh, try not to spam the chat too much, such as with the capital word "what." I mean, but... technically speaking, that's not spam. I mean, it's more of just art, I guess. Okay. Don't ask me. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the actual Punnett Square stuff. Or not Punnett Square stuff, but lecture stuff. So last week, we talked about Punnett Squares. 
Uh, I forgot to go over this one thing. So we're gonna do it now. Um, so basically this is just like a cool tip. You don't need to remember this, but I think it's pretty cool because I did not how to did not know how to find what I wanted to find before I used this. So basically, let's say you have three traits. And so they're traits for fur color, eye color, and the number of toes. So let's say you wanted to find like, okay, so let's say you have two parents and they're the genotypes as shown over there. And you want to find the probability that their offspring has the genotype little b, little b, capital B, capital G, little g, and two capital T's. So instead of like putting everything out in the Punnett square, which would take like a really long time to like fill in each box, you can first, you can look at them separately. So you can look at the trait for fur color first and you see like the individual Punnett square for that. And you find that the genotypes for fur color for the two parents, it's capital B, little b, and then two little b's. So you know that 50% of the time, since you're looking for the little two little b genotype in the offspring, 50% of the time, it's two little b's. So that's the first diagram in the, or it would be this way, I don't know. But it's the first diagram in the top right. And then, so let's look at the eye color next. Same process, you find that 50% of the time, the genotype is capital G and then little g. And then you finally look at the toes and you find that 25% of the time, the genotype is two capital T's. So they're all shown in the Punnett squares on the right. And so, after you found the individual property, you can actually multiply them together to find the probability of the genotype of the three traits that you want. And so you find that it's 6.25%, which is our answer. So you don't actually have to like lay out the entire Punnett square. You just have to find the individual traits and then multi multiply them together, which is like basically, wait, let me, Reshare my screen. Oh yeah, which is basically just like probability. And so that is pretty cool. Uh, okay, so going on to the actual lesson for today. I don't know how long it will take, but I, I think it's pretty like info heavy. So wait, let me send the slide into the chat so you guys can follow along if you want. Oh, I was about to direct message it to Brianna again. Okay, so what is a pedigree? So a pedigree is basically a visual representation of a family tree that observes how one certain trait is inherited throughout the generations of the family tree. And it basically, it illustrates whether an individual is affected or unaffected, so if the trait is present or absent um, in relation to the other family members. And so from this, we can actually find how traits are inherited if they're dominant, recessive, sex-linked, autosomal. And then I'll go all over all of this later, but basically just know that it's a family tree that whose purpose is to show how a trait is passed down. And so through this, we can visualize a lot of diseases like color blindness, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, et cetera. So common symbols used in a pedigree. So as you guys saw in the Kahoot, a circle indicates female, a square indicates male. And if it's colored in, then that means the individual is affected with the trait that we're looking at. And so, if there's a line through the um, shape, then that means this person is deceased. And then the tree branch triangle thingies means twins adopted and miscarriage. Although you don't really see, you really- hey, What's miscarriage? Miscarriage just means that like you were pregnant with an individual, but due to like health reasons, you don't actually like give birth to them before the baby is deceased. So, yeah, deceased means like dead. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But in reality, 
like the only real the only symbols that you really see are like female male and affected so as you can see on the right side of the diagram thingy so if two individuals are connected by a um horizontal line that means they're married if they're connected by like some sort of vertical line that means like they're apart so as you can see from the marriage line you have one of the vertical lines that branches out so these people are family and siblings so they're not married um if it's like in between them instead of like going up then that means they're married and then on the left, you have the generation number. So generation one is the um, parent generation, and then two would be F1. And so how do we analyze a pedigree? So the only real way to like analyze it and be able to recognize is, um, is through practice. So let's do a quick mini quiz here. So your job is to find the genotypes of both parents. And so let's say, let's say the trait here, we're looking at trait A. So capital A is dominant and little a is for recessive. So Andy just asked what a genotype is. So, oh, okay, that makes sense. So a genotype, so basically for, in simple terms, for every trait in our body, so let's say hair color, eye color, each of these traits has a genotype and a genotype has two alleles, which are two forms of the trait. So let's look at hair color. So a hair color could have the alleles, brown hair and blonde hair. And so they would be two different alleles of the same gene. And so these alleles combine in or these alleles exist in pairs that determine a genotype, and a genotype is essentially what ultimately determines the trait. So in the two alleles, there's going to be a dominant one, which if that allele exists in the genotype, it's always present. So let's say like brown is dominant. So if you have a brown allele and a blonde allele, then brown allele would be dominant because it would always be expressed and the blonde would be recessive because it would be masked by the brown because the brown here is what you actually see. Does that make sense? Yes. It's not always, but it usually is. Okay, cool. So what would be the two alleles here? So would it be either AA, AA, or AA. So as you can see, the two parents, they have one affected child, but they're both unaffected. So what does this mean about their genotype? And remember, a dominant allele is always expressed, but neither of the parents have the trait, but their offspring does. One of them has a recessive gene for it. Wait, type it into the chat. Oh, I, okay, I sent it, okay, okay. So, AA, AA, okay. Okay, Kiana, so think about it. Oh my god, I keep sending things privately, oh my god, okay. So, yes, so they have to have a recessive gene. So think about it this way, Kiana. If you have AA, two capital A's, wait, let me just type this out and not to Brianna. If you have AA and AA, then the offspring, what are the possible um, offspring genotypes? So if you pair them together, yes, you could have AA, AA. Well, no, it would be half. So you would have two, you would have two, yes. You would have two of the capital A's and one capital A and one little a. But in both of those cases, the dominant trait exists. So the parents would have to be affected. But that's not, okay. So if a dominant trait exists in both parents, 
you know that the child has to have the dominant trait. But in this case, wait, no. Can you post the link of the slide in the chat? Oh, wait, yeah. Okay. So in both AA and. Okay, okay, okay. I know what I'm saying now. So basically, if you have an AA and. Okay, wait. If you have an AA and AA parent, then you know the offspring has to either be AA or AA. So that means that the dominant trait has to be exhibited in both of the offspring. But in this case, one of the offspring is unaffected and one is affected, which wouldn't be the case if, um, which wouldn't be the case if the parent genotype was two big A's and one big A and one little A. So we need, yeah. So we need a situation where the parent's genotype can produce one affected child and one unaffected child. So that means that one would have to be recessive, show the recessive phenotype, and one would have to show the dominant phenotype. So um, I forgot who said it, but one of them does... One of them has to have um, a recessive. At least one of them has to have a recessive. Oh yeah, good job, Alan. So Eli, because so in your scenario, both of all of the offspring would have the capital A and the lowercase a. So that means that the dominant trait is again always present. So all of the children should be either affected or unaffected. So if the parent genotypes are homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive, then the offspring would all have at least, would all have one of the dominant trait. Wait, it would be easier if I could write on this. Can I write on this? I can write at this pool. Yes, okay, Mason, good. So let me, can I write on this? Okay, there we go. So if you have, oh, that's a weird color. So if you have, so let's say you have a Punnett square here and you have AA and AA, then this would all be AA. Well, you guys can see on the screen. So they would all have the dominant A. So that means they would all have the same genotype, but that's obviously not the case because one of them doesn't show it. So that's why, um, it, that's why it is what Mason said. And it's too, um, it's too heterozygous. So, if the parents are AA and AA, then the children can either be dominant or recessive. And so that's actually the genotype of this child. So yes, that's right. How do I clear? Clear all my drugs. Okay, moving on. Wait, I need to get out of annotate mode. Okay, there we go. So. Both are heterozygous. If you had conjoined genotype, I cannot answer that question because I personally have not considered it. But in this context, we know that the parents, because the parents seem to be unaffected, but they have an affected child, this means that the trait must be recessive because dominant traits, if both parents have the dominant trait and the trait is dominant, meaning that if it's if you have the dominant allele, it's affected, then it must be passed on in every generation. So yes, it's not, it's two A's. So both parents must be carriers for their chance to, for the child to show the recessive phenotype. So looking at the Punnett square, you see in the bottom 
uh, bottom right, you have two little A's, and that's going to be the phenotype of the affected circle. Does that make sense? Oh, okay, so Richard asked a good question. Aren't there four offspring in the Punnett square and there are only two in the diagram? So a Punnett square shows all of the probabilities of getting, like, of your offspring getting which phenotype. It doesn't actually, like, indicate, like, if you have four kids, then they will definitely follow this. So that's why, like, if you have a child, it's 50-50 biological male or female, but then the next one isn't guaranteed to be the other one. Okay, moving on. So now that we've looked at that, another important part of pedigrees is patterns of inheritance. So what are actually patterns of inheritance? So they are how genes are passed down through a family. So basically, it's a trait dominant or recessive and then, or autosomal or sexist. But if the trait, so first determine if the trait is dominant or recessive. If it's dominant, then the affected will always have an affected parent, which is not the case with what we saw previously because neither of the parents were affected, but the child was affected. So that indicated that it's recessive and it does not skip generations. So, Basically, this means that every generation with an affected, um, with someone with this trait, then the next generation will also have it. Um, and then it will skip generations if it's recessive because parents can be heterozygous. So basically what this means is, basically if you see a lot of affected individuals, it's probably dominant. If you don't see that much, it's probably recessive, unless some certain case scenarios we will see later. And then determine if it's autosomal or sexist. So recall that humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes and chromosomes are what have most of our genes that determine our traits. So autosomal chromosomes are basically the first 22 pairs that do, do not determine are sex. And then sex linked means X, X, which is female, or XY, which is male. Okay. And then, so if it affects males and females equally, so circles and squares equally, then it's autosomal. But then if it affects one over the other, it's sex linked. If it affects males more than females, it's X linked recessive, because females have the opportunity to get two of the alleles. So that means the probability that one of them is dominant and masks the recessive is high, but then males only have one. So if you get um, a diseased allele, then you have to show it because they only have one X chromosome. Um, if all of the female, if all female offspring of an affected dad has it, then it's definitely X-linked dominant. So this is because affected, an affected dad, so males only have one X chromosome. So if males only have one X chromosome, so if they have an allele on that chromosome that has the disorder, then they have to pass that down to a female offspring because the female child needs an X chromosome from both its mom and its dad. So they have to have at least one, just one X chromosome with the trait. So that's why it's X linked dominant. Stop me at any time if I'm going too fast or if something doesn't make sense and I'll try to explain it. Um, so if a male parent has it, then the male, male child must have it. This means it's linked to the Y chromosome because moms, can't pass down Y chromosomes because they don't have Y chromosomes. So if a Y chromosome has a trait, then the dad has to pass it down. And then, so there's also mitochondrial DNA. So most DNA is found in the nucleus in the form of chromosomes, but then you actually have DNA found in the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. And so, 
the thing is you get all of your mitochondrial DNA from your mom. And so this means that affected offspring will always have an affected mom because the dad can't pass down mitochondrial DNA because it always gets destroyed. Because, okay, I'm not going to go into it, but if someone wants me to explain, I can explain. Okay, so let's look at the first pattern of inheritance, which is autosomal dominant. So autosomal dominant means that it's not linked to the sex chromosomes. So males and females are affected equally, and it does not skip generations. So as you can see, But what do the squares and circles represent? So square means male, and then circle means female. So mom. So square is like the dad, and mom is the circle. What do the ones and two mean under the circles? Oh, okay. So basically, um, there's. Okay, so the one and two are basically just the order. So in a pedigree, actually, from left to right in the generation is actually the oldest. So one is the one is older than two in the same line. And also sometimes if you like take a course on genetics and you have a test or something, then like the quiz will may ask you like, what's the genotype of two, three? And there you know it's talking about generation two, individual three. Um, so basically, as you can see here, it basically appears in every generation if there's an affected parent. So in the um, left diagram, individuals seven and eight, they don't exhibit the trait. So that means they have to be recessive because the trait is dominant. So none of their offspring can get the dominant trait because you can't go from recessive to dominant, but you can go from dominant to recessive because it can be... Um, carriers. Yeah, no worries, Brie, on uh, my, like, it's also thunderstorming over here, and kind of scary. But, hey, where well, are, are you? Are you, are you? are you making the beeping sound? No. Uh, Wait, where are you if it's raining? Oh, I'm on the East Coast. So I heard the beeping, too. Oh, the beeping is because our fire alarm like died for it's telling us to switch yeah, the ours, battery. Yeah, ours was dying too, and we got annoyed for oh, it. Oh, I for a night. Mine was mine was dying too, and we got annoyed for a night. Yo, before twins. finally it stopped. Twins. Oh, yeah. once, once, um, once at my house, like it kept beeping at night, and we didn't know what to do. And finally, um, when they took when they took it off, like the thing started mm -hmm. just beeping like wild and, um, um, that oh, way. No. okay yeah we just like we take it out oh yeah it's fine okay but basically here as you can see if the parents if two parents are recessive if two parents are recessive none of the offspring can get the trait and if two parents are dominant the offspring can be recessive or dominant okay so these are famous disorders that have auto, that are inherited autosomal dominantly. So that means these, trait, these traits follow the autosomal dominant pattern. So the first disorder we will look at is Huntington's disease, which is caused by a mutation on chromosome pair number four. Okay, everyone's house beepers just collectively decided to start beeping. Oh, we were okay. So my fire alarm thingy, I don't know, smoke detector, it's like going off right now. So if you hear beeping, that's fine. Okay, so basically, what Huntington diseases causes Huntington these help English. Okay, Huntington's disease causes is nerve cells to break down over time. And then Marfan syndrome is mutation on chromosome pair 15, and it affects basically um, connective tissue, which involves like blood and also blood going to the higher eyes, etc. Um, 
achondroplasia mutation on pair four and so it's short limb dwarfism which is what you see on the right you don't have to remember any of this i'm never going to quiz you on this because that would be evil but these these are just cool things to know okay autosomal recessive so as you can see here it does skip generations so in the diagram on the left it's not until the third generation that you actually get one of the affected people and so if you guys remember the slash means deceased that's just something to remember i guess um yeah, so basically, if you have two unaffected parents, it can affect, it can produce an affected offspring, unlike dominant um, disorders. So there are a lot of autosomal recessive disorders that are really famous. You've probably heard of them. So sickle cell anemia, as you guys probably know, it's when your red blood cells turn a weird shape, and so they can't carry oxygen around properly. So it can get really dangerous. So it's caused by a point mutation, actually, if you guys remember what that is, uh, which is basically just one of the amino acids in the protein gets, well, one of the nucleotides gets weird, and it's caused on pair, uh, chromosome pair 11. Um, so it causes red blood cells to adopt a weird shape and break down. Um, also, Tay-Shot disease, it's um, caused by chromosome pair 15 not making a certain gene, and that's what you see on the right there. So what you see on the right is a karyotype, which is just a basically a visualization of all of your chromosome pairs. And so this causes the nerve cells in the brain and spine to be destroyed over time. So it's like premature atrophy. And then cystic fibrosis, which you guys have also probably heard of, it's caused by a mutation on chromosome pair 7. Um, basically, it's lungs and digestive system have unnecessary fluid buildup, so like the mucus and sweat, etc., don't get expelled like they usually would. Phenylketonuria. This is my personal favorite disease. I have no idea why, but um, it's basically a mutation on chromosome pair 12, and it causes an amino acid phenylalanine to build up in the body. One single cell gene equals one. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yes. Some, uh, some diseases are pure bad, while others might depend on whether you get it from both parents or just one. So maybe you have extra malaria resistance. You might not well, even know. That's, I guess, reassuring. That's interesting. I did not think they were correlated. Okay. Um, okay, excellent dominant. So, as you can see here, um, it's basically the same principles as autosomal dominant. It's just that females are affected slightly more. Um, again, every affected individual has an affected parent. So, disorders associated, there's not much um associated with this um vitamin d resistant rickets it's caused by a mutation on the vdr gene on the x chromosome the bones become really soft and bend easily because you need vitamin d to strengthen your bones kids okay and then also Rett syndrome um, mutation on that gene um, it affects brain development and like all of these disorders it's mostly present in girls because again x dominant you get two chances to get that disease and so red syndrome is what you see on the diagram on the right okay excellent recessive is another really like i guess fruitful um fruitful pattern of inheritance that has a lot of disorders. So as you can see here, males are definitely affected more than females and an affected individual does not have to have an affected parent, which is how you know it's recessive. So disorders, red brain colorblindness, mutation on the red pigment and green pigment genes on the X um, chromosome. So you have difficulty telling apart shades of red, green, and yellow. So I'm going to go to the last disorder here first. 
Um, and then I'll go back to hemophilia because that's oh, a wait. What's the thing on the right? Okay, so I will explain that. Do you mean the pedigree? I mean, like the pinch, the picture. Yeah. Okay. I will explain it after I go through Duchenne muscular dystrophy, um, which just basically means your muscles get weaker. Um, mutation on the TMT gene. So, hemophilia A is a very, very um, famous example of X linked recessive. And it's a mutation on the FH gene, and basically, blood cannot clot properly. So, if you like get a clot, not clot, cut or something, um, your blood cannot like stop itself from flowing and you just basically lose all of your blood. So the reason why this is famous is because actually Prince, Vic not Prince Victoria, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, they were actually like a really famous example of, um, of having hemophilia A. So Queen Victoria was a carrier and so Basically, all of their kids basically kept on getting hemophilia. And at that time, obviously, no one understood why so many of just the male children had hemophilia A. As you can see, like, it's literally like, I don't know, 60 to 80 percent of the males, they're all affected by this disease and they just kept dying off and no one understood why. But after some research, we found that in their family tree, there was actually traces of this hemophilia A disease. And that's how we actually discovered what X-linked recessive means. And this gave us a lot of insight onto um, patterns of inheritance. So that's pretty cool. So Y-linked. Um, so there's not a lot of diseases associated with y chromosome because it's so small compared to the X chromosome and any other chromosome. So there's not a lot of genes on it. Um, as you can see in the diagram, all of the affected males pass it on to the, all the affected males pass it on to their male offspring. Um, I guess one disease is Y chromosome infertility that's caused by a mutation on the Y gene and it Results in infertility. Wow, who could have a guess? Okay, mitochondrial. Um, so mitochondrial means that if the mother is affected, then they have to pass it to all of the offspring because you get all of your mitochondrial DNA from your mom. So as you can see here, that's what it is. Disorders. Kearns Sayer syndrome mutation on mitochondrial DNA results in defective mitochondria muscle weakness because mitochondria provide energy for the muscles. So if you don't have the right mitochondria, then your muscles get weak. Oh, oops. Um, paralysis of eyes and weird heartbeat because those are all associated with muscle movement. Um, Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy which also results in vision loss. And so basically if you have this disease, you would be seeing something um, like the image on the right. So the image on the left would be normal people vision. And then if you have this disease, it would be what you see on the right. Okay, so these are not associated with pedigrees. These are just some important disorders that you don't have to remember, but I think Okay, well, these are more famous than the other ones, actually, except for like color blindness, Tay-Sachs, um, sickle cell anemia, cystic fibrosis. The other ones are kind of like just there, but these are all like really famous. So Down it, syndrome. For the second yeah. one, for, for, for the second one, if you just, wait, do you get like complete vision loss or just, just everything just become blurry? Yeah, it's like kind of like blurry. Um, I would assume that they have some like medical advancements, like fancy glasses that can probably fix it, but it's not like complete blind. That makes sense. Okay, so I'm sure you guys have all heard of Down syndrome. You get trisomy 21, so you have three chromosomes instead of two because they normally exist in pairs on chromosome 21. Um, symptoms are intellectual and developmental delays, Edwards syndrome. Um, 
three chromosomes on chromosome 18. Again, it's called trisomy, slow growth before birth, and you die within a year because you're not mature. Patau syndrome, um, trisomy 13, severe intellectual and physical defects, triple X, you have three X um, chromosomes. You actually don't have any symptoms. Um, Klinefelter's is when you have two X, one Y, or one X and two Y. Um, so because the Y chromosome is there, then that means the person has to be male and you get less masculine characteristics, like less muscle hair and lower testosterone levels. So Quiducat, um, it's a deletion of the PR long chromosome five. And so the babies have a cry that sounds like a cat. Uh, oh, but that said memory syndrome and not remembering any of these syndromes. That's fair, I don't remember. That's why you can refer back to this PowerPoint. Unfortunately, there is no cry do dog or cry do wolf. Um, Angelman syndrome, chromosome 15. There is definitely not a cry do unicorn. Um, yeah, developmental disabilities and Prader Willi syndrome, loss of chromosome 15 genes, obesity, intellectual disability, and shortness in height. So you can see some of the carrier types of the diseases on the right. Okay, now let's go to our gym kits. I will not be giving you guys infinite money. Oh, I have to play playing humans human versus zombies. zombies, though. Where do you play human versus can, zombies? Can we do, um... Trust I tried to make I thought last lesson we no already did, like, no every single no one. one. I'm gonna do trust no one. Right. Can we do trust no one? Yeah. Oh, let's let's trust do no humans one. versus zombies. Humans versus no zombies. No one. No one. Humans versus no one. No one. You guys didn't know, then, then we're all working as a team, you know? No. Also, the Among Us one is just absolute, ab just... Oh. I, I mean, for y'all. Plus no one. Oh, but Dot, but Dot hey, is a good suggestion. I want to trust no one. Yeah, hey, trust no one. I want to trust no one. Oh, hey. Trust no one. Why oh, you all God. like love trust no one? Guys, guys, let's calm down. Trust so, no one is the is the. All right, calm down, or we're why not is playing trust no one, one the? If you guys don't yeah. calm down, we're not no. playing game kit. Why? Proceeds to not play game kit. Okay. All right. What's drained mode? What's drained? I'm tired. Okay, okay, guys. What's, guys. what's drain mode? No. When I read. You don't want to lose I money. Read, when I read a mode, you guys scream, and whichever um you guys scream for the loudest, we'll play that. Hey, okay. I, I've got a really sensitive mic here, so. Classic. Team mode. Trust no one. Draw that. The floor is lava. <laughs> Human versus zombies. <laughs> I don't want to mode. scream. Okay. Boss battle. Super rich. Okay, let's say super. Yeah. yeah. Mm, no, let's play super rich. Yeah, we, we, no. yeah let's play super rich. No. no. Oh, gee, now we're just screaming at nothing. No. That was like human yeah, versus zombies. <laughs> oh wait, starting cash now. Let's so get two hundred. Oh, two, um, twenty thousand. That's pretty good. Twenty thousand. All right. Oh no! I direct message it to Andy. Okay, there we go. Okay. I am a dictator here, so in the end, I will. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's okay. On the last day, we'll just play gym kit all day. Is it gym kit or gym kit? No, we call it gym. Okay, I'll wait until like 8.51. So we can end at like 9.01. We're gonna take 10 minutes. Do, do, do. I like team games. Apollo is a team player. Why are there two dot dot dots? 
Or is it, it's not loading? If you like team games, then why didn't you uh, vote for uh, team fun. the floor is lava? Because that's that's like the most. That's a game that you can't win. What? I want something where you can win. Well, I mean, you basically can. the yeah, teacher just, always just... wins every <laughs> single time, no matter you, what. You you might be right about. And then she gives us like one dollar. <laughs> Super califragilistic is, is apparently an actual word. Yes. Which, you know, I, I remember in seventh grade, I won like a spelling bee thing with that. Wow. That was the peak of my career. <laughs> the peak of your career. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna start. Oh, oh Ethan. Give, give me one second. Give me Super one. califragilistic expialidocious. Proceeds to turn. All right, now I'm ready. Actually, pretty easy to spell. It just spells like exactly how it like sounds. <laughs> Among us, sussy baka. Okay, Hello. I'm gonna start. That's one heck of a name. Uh, oh no, I got it wrong. <laughs> oh no, I got it wrong again. All right. Here we go again in first monkey and second Brianna and third Vedant and fourth. Oh, never mind. These are changing. All right. Interesting. Wow, you guys are getting rich. <laughs> Ethan, can you hear now? Yes, no. Maybe. Okay. If I ask, can you hear me? And you say, no, you can't. Or Who no, the I heck can't? just cash blinded me or cash concealed me? That's just. Uh, me. Uh, oh, Panzer. Okay, wait, let me respond to your question. I was planning to do it on you again, but I couldn't. Really? Dang, this is quite intense. Are we getting poor, guys? Yeah, because we're getting stuff wrong. <laughs> My fork is... Oh, never mind. My fork is not first. I think I just drinks you. Oh, I Guys, does anyone want a gift? They're not deserving of your gift. Oh, Mason wants a gift. I want a gift. I would sure love a gift. Oh, I would like a gift. a gift. Okay, type a yes in the chat if you'd like a gift. Okay, Caleb, type it first. 
Wait, Caleb, type your um gym kid name. Gym kid name. Chicken, all right. It's chicken. Pranusha, I just got blurred by Apollo. I'm going to just snitch on oh, I just now. love this game. I'm going to snitch Me on too. Fork blurred high. Me too, dot exe. I want a gift. I want wait. My name's Apollo and Game Kit. My name's Apollo. Athena and a gay kit and I want a gift. <laughs> I will give you guys the gift of genetics knowledge in the next few weeks. I just attracted someone. Oh, Apollo subtracted space. Fork yeah, she's out. number one. I'm just gonna subtract everyone that's number who is space? Me. I just did something Ooh. to him again. Okay, monkey is second. Monkey, I believe in you. I believe in the monkey. No, monkey, 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 go. Orc. Okay, monkey third. I have a bias towards monkey. Monkey second. I'm very poor. I need help. Who just who just iced monkey? Ayo, hands off monkey. Who just iced monkey? Huh? Who iced monkey? Why do I know? Yo, why do people keep icing monkey? Chill. <laughs> Calm down. Yo, yo, yo. Okay, I think I just made monkey a target. I'm sorry, monkey. Sorry. I need help. Okay, you can type a question in the chat and I'll answer it. Okay. Um, mm, I don't like monkey more. I like fork. Yes, go fork. Forky. Fork. Are you guys going to all attack fork now? Okay. <laughs> oh. Tax work. <laughs> Yo, I, I'm kind of sabotaging people right now. Okay, space. I like I space. Help. I am the like... sabotager. Yeah, that you should blur whoever you want. Yo, wait, that's actually kind of funny. I just made everyone turn on fork. Okay. Who Who's my next target? Somebody. Okay, Mason. Here we go again. I like here we go again now. Here we go again. I hope you go up. Wait, no, there's two here we go again. Yo. In the capital, here we go again. Psych! Oh, and turn on shield. Well, I made you waste money, so. <laughs> Purchases a show. Here we go again. I saw one. Whoa. Dog water so free in the lead. Oh, no, never mind. Never right. mind. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Problem is, you can only use like one thing. Oh, Dog water so free in the beginning of the <laughs> or in the front. This is oh my god, here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> Here we go again. All right, guys, there's one minute. And, oh, for those of you guys not playing, you can just like leave now. There's not really anything else you need to go over. Who blurred me? Wait, uh, still, oh, never mind. But not to blur that pop up. I'm snitching. Oh, no, this is revenge. But not just exposed herself. Oh, dog water so free is number one. Okay, bring dog, dog water so free down. Down with the dog water so no. I, I, will remain, I will remain a neutral, good teacher. Can someone give me a gift? Guys, no one give Apollo a gift. 
Bruh. Thank you. <laughs> Do you know how much money I have now? Give me another gift. I want a gift. Alright, but it's 50 seconds left. I don't even have, I haven't even had the first monkey with insects. I have six thousand dollars. Give me another gift. I want another gift. I know I just lost it all. I want another gift. I I want another gift. I need a gift. I I just lost everything but answering questions. I just need a gift. Why is Kiana? I need a gift. I haven't got a gift for the whole game. Me either. I haven't. I need a gift. I have zero dollars now. I'm like, neg- I oh, now gift. I'm negative fifty. I have my bad. Fifty dollars. I just need a gift. Any gift. I need any. I need gift. gifts. I need I'm like I need zero dollars now. I need a gift. I need. I need something. I need a gift. Okay, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, it's over. We have a monkey in third. With Whoever the heck did the number thing to me, I am so mad at you right now. Okay, who I think was- I did the number thing to you. I am slit- I'm who was dog water so, so mad free? at you. I got an 11. And the, and, and the worst thing is I could not for the, like, why is why do, I could why, not why I, figure out what the out was supposed uh, to mean. So I just I was just clicking random numbers. Why am I only at one hundred ninety thousand? Can we do another one? What this does the what does fortunately the we cannot today because it is the end of class. But first we need to figure out who dog water so free is. So our winner, can that you please say reveal yourself? Well, I'm glad I sabotaged. The I was in I'm last. I'm just. I I'm in just in I really have place. another. I'm in eleventh place. I'd, I'd like another dare. What? I fun. would not like another dare. I got a nineteenth place. All right, in all, all, in, place. all in favor of Emily getting oh, no. another dare. Apparently, say I, I still ha- Apparently, I still had my shield activated at the end, so I'm still dark. Oh. No eyes. All right. I guess I'm gonna Okay, try. okay. Maybe and you guys can make me do a dare later. Oh. Later in the session. But you guys are all winners in my heart. We will later not mention is that. a very ominous. Okay. Yeah. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Good game.